All right, hi. So I am here to talk about ads. Um, it's a little bit more far-reaching than just ads. It's When I say ads here, it's really ads, pixels, third-party widgets, and so on. Um, so I just want to get a feel for what the crowd is like. So we'll go half and half. Like, Are you on tech or not on tech? Are you business or tech? So well, tech first. Mostly tech, yeah, looking good. OK, and the rest, I assume, are business or shy. Or both, or both would be awesome, yes. <laughs> OK, cool. So for the business people, um, I'm sure you've come to a tech person at some point and said, uh, you know, my email provider wants to add this little pixel on the page so we can track our users when they click on emails. Or, hey, we want, just want to add one more ad, or we want to add tracking for this other partner. We want to make money by having uh, you know, this Bizzo tag on the page so that we can get paid for tagging people. Um, and you probably had the, this experience. Right, with like just the tag, are you sure? Like, is that really what it is? It's not gonna cause any tr trouble at all, right? Okay. So they probably all, you've probably had that experience. You've either been this guy or, you know, had this guy look at you like this. Um, so I'm kinda here to tell you why that happens and why we actually care about that. Why do we give you that look? Because um, it's not that obvious um, from the start. All right, so here's, here's your page, right? We have 12 requests. It takes some time to load them. Um, actually, this is cheating a little bit because even for the requests that are there are actually from tracking itself. So if you get down to just the content on the page is actually a lot smaller than that um, even. So now this is your page on ads and pixels. But wait, Here, let me zoom out a minute so you can see the whole thing. So right there's top left is the waterfall for no ads and no pixels except for a couple of pixels that you saw listed in there. All right side, so now we've got ads, we've got pixels, we have all this tracking, um, and that's what it looks like. All right. So, all right, so this isn't gonna work, the video's not gonna work, but so I can <laughs> have a backup plan. So I need two volunteers, and you have to be able to count. Can anybody do that? <laughs> two volunteers? If you, if you want to volunteer, come on up. I need two of them. Come on, you'll be famous. Come on up on stage. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, Courtney, yep. is that right? Yep. And, Rob. and Rob. Okay. So, Courtney, can you stand over here? Rob, you can stay right where you are. So, when I point to you, you're going to start counting. And you remember how to count when you're in, like, football when you're a kid? Right. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Mm -hmm. When I stop pointing to you, you can go back to your seat. And when I, yeah, so it'll be the same for both of you. So imagine we're loading a page here, and we're going to start counting, and now? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, okay. three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Not you yet. You say. Six <laughs> Mississippi. All right, all right. Wait, wait, and I'm we messed to it up. Yes. No, do it again. Do it again. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not good at following instructions. That's okay. I'm bad at giving them, so it's okay, a bad yeah, plan here. <laughs> okay, I'm going right. to leave. Is that so I'm gonna, when you point at me? When I'm pointing at you, yeah. count. When I take my finger away from you, you leave. Okay. okay. All right. We're gonna do it. Okay, and one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Four now I could go on my presentation now, but because of <laughs> Rob here, seven Mississippi, eight. We're still gonna wait here until the video is over. Mississippi, ten Mississippi, eleven. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> and you felt like you felt how long that was, right? <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause for saying that. <laughs> All right, Rob, Rob stuck with it to the end, and you know, Courtney bailed out soon, um, but. You can see, like, even just being here for 10 seconds, that feels like a long time, especially when you're the one counting. I'm sure Rob can attest to that after. So I did have a video that showed the actual pages loading, but they did, I think, a better job. So thanks. Thank you. So there, so the page, you know, you had some ads, you had some pixels. Now it's five times slower. What happened to everybody talking about these, you know, real-time ads, and they're so fast, and we have all these CDN networks that take care of this stuff for you. Well. The, I mean, the problem was that long, that huge sheet of requests, right? I mean, that's the, prob that's the bulk of the problem. Um, and it's really just that the internet technology is not actually built to do these things. It just does them because it makes us money. So long request chains are a big part of it. So you add, let's just say we add one, one ad on the page today. It's slow, not because it's just slow and there are bad programmers making this stuff. It's slow because it's doing a lot. Right? It has uh, long request chains, meaning it's not like you just ask for that and it gives it to you back. Right? It says, okay, give me the ad. 
It says, ah, just a minute, let me go figure out who's the highest paying ad, right? So it's gotta go do that. And then it makes, not like it does all this in serial, it does this, and then it will say, okay, now I'm gonna make another request to a different URL, right? That will maybe do some optimizations to do better targeting or um, formatting or something else, right? And then there's all the hair handoffs in between. So it says, ah, this network's gonna do best for you. Um, here's the best targeting for it. And then it knows, sends off another request to someone else that says, okay, now what's the actual ad that I want? Um, and it could do that several times, right? You might have one network that is, ha, does a bidding for you and it says, ah, I've got the perfect ad for you, this network over here. And they go, ah, I've got the perfect ad for you, this network over here. And eventually someone will deliver an ad, but it sometimes takes a, a few uh, steps to do that. Um, and then on top of that, each step wants to do its own tracking. So every time it's sort of handing it off to the next network provider, or ad provider, they're, they're all implementing their own tracking to know like how many times did it serve, who did it serve to, did someone click on it, right? That's all stuff that they have to add in as well, so that's more requests on top of that. Uh, occasionally you'll see piggybacking pixels, so they're serving ads, but they're also maybe putting on another pixel so they can do their own tracking, not just for the ad performance, but for some other means. Uh, or for it maybe even be getting paid for, for that pixel being on there. Um, so the, to sum up, basically a single thing can make many, many requests, right? And so there's a lot of, a lot to, that goes on there. So who cares? I mean, especially in the case of pixels, who really cares? I mean, it's, a lot of this is happening in the background. It's an invisible pixel somewhere on the page that nobody sees, right? Who, who cares? Um, well, I'll tell you who cares. So for one, your sluggish website cares, right? So you can see a lot of the blue is with the ads and pixels. And all this data is actually taken from our own, from Manta. Um, so it's a real-world example. Uh, we, ha we have several ads and several pixels. So, um, so there's a lot of high you know, blue bars there and some low red bars. But the one I'm pointing out there is the load time. And so the load time or the onload event happens when your browser is kind of done and it sort of notifies. A lot of times it notifies your JavaScript to continue on with um, you know, setting up event handlers to track clicks or to handle the clicks itself to, so that it can, when you click on it, actually give you some data back or whatever. Um, it's sort of the thing that triggers off a lot of your JavaScript to run, so you wanna be careful about making that particular metric go up. Um, and in this case, you can see it's quite a bit higher. And so the page might be there, um, but it may not be interactive at that point. The other one over to the right there is the CPU busy time. Um, so if you've ever, especially on your phone, gone to a website and looks like the page is there and you start scrolling around and it's kind of stuttery or doesn't feel smooth. Um, I mean, a lot of that comes from the CPU just being busy. I mean, it's doing things that you can't see, but it's, it's working. Um, and so you gotta watch out for that. So what else is going on? So you're, you know, if you have data usage bills anymore, some people do. Um, it actually costs money to have, you know, you're walking around your phone looking at a website and for some reason, you don't get any benefit from whatever's going on, but something's going on that's causing your bill to double, right? That would be unfortunate. So all those things kind of add up, as well as this thing here to say that your phone's battery definitely cares. Um, so this is looking at the number of requests that happen. And you can see, you know, you're nearing 160 with the ads and pixels, and you're down at about 12, I think is the number, without. So if you can imagine your phone has to open up a network connection over your radio, to go out and get all these ads, pixels, tracking, everything else. I mean, that's, that's pretty huge, right? And so that's gonna drain your battery and just make things slower in general, so. And then lastly, Google cares, right? So you can, I can probably just walk off the stage now, right? But Google cares, so you should care too. Um, but fortunately, so Google cares in that they um, have hinted for a long time that speed and performance uh, is an indicator for how you're gonna rank in search. Now luckily they also give you tools to look at the page and see how they, what they think of it. And so Google Page Speed Insights is one uh, of many tools that you can use, but it's from Google, so it's nice to, to sort of, it's easy to sell that to your company and say, hey look, it's Google telling us how we should be doing in SEO, right? So. Um, this is after we've done a bunch of performance optimizations recently on making the pixels and everything more performant. Um, we're up to an 82 out of 100 on one of our pages. So if you just take them off, it jumps up to a 90, right? So same exact functionality for the user, um, but you jump from a 82 to a 90. 
like I said, that's after we've done many optimizations on the stuff that's already there. So it was down in the 40s at first, and now it's up to the 80s. Um, we could take it even higher if we just said take them off. But you, like you see, you're not going to get that speed improvement for free. Um, so you can either take them off or you can make them faster. And keeping them on will give you some cost, um, but we feel comfortable with 82 right now. So we're going with that. So what are uh, some other costs? So, um, so some other things to look out for when you're adding these extra, extra widgets or adds pixels is to, uh, they don't always, they aren't always as advanced as you might want to be in your tech stack. So uh, for example, right now we're actually working through with all of our ad providers, making sure that they support HTTPS because we want to move to speedy HTTP2, which both require HTTPS, right? So right now we're trying to, we're going through a process of testing that and making sure that um, when we switch, make this switch, when we make the switch to make our pages faster, that the ads will be able to even serve ads at all, and that they will perform well enough, uh, both revenue and you know, uh, speed wise. You can also see a loss of ad revenue, so you should really be measuring the impact of every pixel that you're putting on the page, um, because you can actually get a loss of ad revenue. We actually saw by taking off one of the ads, we made more ad revenue in general. So. Uh, and I've also heard that maybe your soul. I don't know. I haven't proven that yet, but it's, it's a hypothesis. So um, one of the, I just want to point out one last thing before I go that the one of the really important things to look out for is a SPOF. Uh, and I hate that. I hate saying SPOF. Um, but I, I don't know. It's shorter for the slide. So a single point of failure, right? So you want to watch out for single points of failure. And this slide here showing, so blue is the standard original page, you know, ads and all that stuff. And then the red one is the one that has, um, I took the AdSense, inline AdSense ad and said, uh, let's make that a single point of failure and see what happens. And the red lines are what you see go on again. And, and you'll see, uh, again, you know, on load time is way, way up, right? Because it's waiting for that unit. Um, now the reason this one is particularly bad is because it's not asynchronous and it's not deferred either. And so it's, really blocking, it's blocking and waiting for 30 seconds until it times out and then it moves on to the rest of the page rendering and um, all the other JavaScript firing. So I'm sure you've probably all about heard about web page test because you're here at Velocity and they talk about it all the time because they should. <laughs> um, but one feature that a lot of people don't really uh, use a lot but I love is the, sing the single point of failure uh, setting here. So if you click on that tab, so you, can, you, know, you go and you enter your URL and you can test it, but then you can also go in here and enter your URL and set some SPOF settings to say the domain for AdSense should go into this black hole and not respond, or your whatever tracking pixel that you want to add, you just add that domain to this list here, and it will generate um, this graph for you to say, like, here's what happens to your page if that thing fails. Um, and that thing will fail, so don't let the people giving you the pixel pretend that it won't, it will. Uh, it's the internet, things fail. Um, so there are a few, few tools that you can uh, use to measure. Uh, nothing uh, revolutionary here, just a few that you probably heard about before. But as far as measuring it goes, you can use uh, Google PageSpeed Insights. I actually showed you some charts from that earlier. Um, webpagetest.org, again, showed you that earlier. That's a really powerful tool. And then Speed Curve uh, is kind of built on top of web page test, uh, but gives you a maybe nicer interface and uh, lets you set up sort of recurring tests so that it will continually pull your pages and graph it out over time to see uh, how that's doing, what, how your third party pixels are affecting your page over time, uh, and show that over time. So it's very nice. And then as far as improving it, so um, two of the main things that we are able to use. Um, without doing any real custom development, really. It's just using these tools to improve the performance. We used, uh, so if you want to put a bunch of pixels on your page, you know, things that you don't see, typically uh, analytics and that sort of stuff, Google Tag Manager is really, pow really powerful for that. Um, it actually, it's twofold. So one thing is that it lets you uh, put them on the page in a way that makes them asynchronous and non-blocking. You can schedule priorities and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it also lets a business person manage putting them there. Um, and then, Oops, and then, um, well, there it goes. And then Google uh, 
publisher tags, which is, so if you're using something like DFP, Google publisher tags uh, is sort of the new way that they want you to do it, and it lets you do things like single request mode and some other things to speed it up. So that's it for me. I'm out of time. So thank you.